Our final video in our intro series is going to cover e-commerce technologies. Actually, I should say our final video in the entire series is our e-commerce technologies. Uh, in previous videos, I also talked about the possibility of developing some Microsoft Office videos uh, for out there so you guys can watch those. It all depends on how successful this intro series is. So be sure to subscribe, click like, and tell others we're out there. So if you're a student and your teacher didn't know about us, be sure to share this with your teacher. If you're a teacher out there and you've enjoyed these videos, be sure to share them with your students. So uh, anyways, moving on. So e-commerce technologies. This is software and IT systems that support transactions over networks. So we're looking at different technologies that support, that make e-commerce possible. Some examples of e-commerce technologies include e-commercial uh, hosts, digital money, and online advertising. The first one, e-commerce hosts, these are companies that can take some or all of the responsibility of creating and maintaining an e-commerce online system for a business. What we're looking at here are hosting companies, host development companies that can create completely or support e-commerce solutions. So for example, Cafe Press would be an example of an e-commerce host where you, the user, don't have to know anything about the back end of creating an online store or storefront. You just create the products. They handle the distribution. They handle the technology that allows it. Now, my own personal site, MrFordsClass.net, I do all of it. So I have a Joomla site. I have different plugins, and I manage the back end. That allows me to make e-commerce possible. But even then, I still have some e-commerce hosts involved. For example, the plugin that I use for my Joomla, the PayPal that runs the back-end pay system. These are different things that allow me to do what I do. Speaking of PayPal, we also have something known as digital money. Digital money can also be known as e-cash or e-money, digital currency, electronic cash, etc., etc. Just add electronic or digital in front of it and you've got probably the right term. Some great examples of digital money include PayPal, which is one of my favorites, Google Checkout, and Bitcoin. Now, first of all, PayPal. I love PayPal. PayPal, yeah, it makes what I'm doing possible. It works with real currency. So it actually is based off of real money. It doesn't create its own money. It's not imaginary money. It's not virtual money. It's real money. It's real money conversions. So you can take the U.S. dollar and convert it to pounds. So, for example, I have members on my site from other countries, from Australia, from England, from New Zealand, from all different other countries, and they use different currency out there. In the old days, I, first of all, it, I couldn't even do this. But what PayPal does is if somebody wants to pay me in pounds, it converts that money into U.S. dollars for me. So it's really cool. So it works with real currency. It does conversions between different uh, monetary systems. The other really cool thing is that you can get a bank card. So for example, you might have a checking account and you have your check card, which can work as a check card or debit card or credit card. PayPal will give you one of these. It, they're amazing, by the way. I have better communication from PayPal than I do my bank. For example, if I go and buy something on my PayPal card, it works just like a check card, just like a bank card. I get the receipt emailed me via PayPal before my bank would ever get me that information. So PayPal is great as far as communication goes. They have great fraud protection. I lost a my PayPal card, had another one replaced within a week. Phenomenal. It offers shopper protection. So if you have a PayPal card, you have protection as well built in for your shopping experience, just like regular credit cards, just like regular bank cards. From a merchant point of view, it's also very cheap to use PayPal. In fact, there's no excuse why any merchant out there can't take credit card information with PayPal. PayPal is a great plugin for the back end of your site. I have it on my site. They take a percentage of the purchase, which all, all of them do. If you go through any other bank to buy the ability or rent the ability to take credit cards, they all take a percentage of the charge. Many banks, however, will also charge you a monthly fee or yearly fee in order to use their product. PayPal only takes money out if you make money. So it's a phenomenal way to take 
credit cards to take bank cards. They also have readers that you can plug in your phone, swipe them, and you can take credit cards. So there's no excuse anymore in this day and age, unless it's a personal preference, not to be able to take credit cards. So PayPal, definitely worth checking out. Bitcoin. Bitcoin is kind of new. It's a peer-to-peer -peer setup. There's no bank or middleman. It's open source. It uses a virtual money. I honestly don't know enough about Bitcoin to say yes or no to it. I did include a link from Bitcoin, um, but I, if you're interested, you can check it out, learn more, and come to your own conclusions. And that's pretty much all I got to tell you about buyout. The next one is online advertising. Okay, first of all, nothing is free. If you haven't learned that lesson, learn it now. Nothing is free. If you're not paying for a service then you are the service. And I talked about Facebook in the database section. Da uh, Facebook is not free. You're using Facebook. If you're using Facebook, you're using it for free. Guess what? You're the service because Facebook makes their money off of advertising to you. So all that information you put into your Facebook account is data mined. See previous videos. And as an advertiser, I pay to reach you as a as a business person. So you are the service. When you're on Facebook, you're the service because Facebook is then advertising to me saying, hey, look, we have this great marketing opportunity for you. You can use this. You can market to people. So Facebook does it. Google definitely does it. In fact, if you're watching these videos on YouTube, guess what? YouTube makes money off of ad revenue. They want quality videos on YouTube because that way you as a consumer go to YouTube watch the videos you're being advertised to and YouTube makes money. Now, this is not a bad thing. And if you say, well, I could not afford to do this if Google didn't advertise to you because as a YouTube contributor, as a YouTube content creator, as a partner, I make money off of YouTube ad revenue. In fact, I'm hoping and counting on this series of videos getting a lot of views, getting a lot of hits, getting a lot of subscribers, because the more subscribers I have, the more views I have, the more YouTube advertises to you, the more revenues I make, which then turns into me being able to not have to do work a day job, which allows me to create more videos, which allows me to buy more products so I can incorporate them into my videos, to allow me to buy stock images, which aren't, aren't cheap, to bring into my videos. So it's a nice environment that has been created so if you're out there you're not clicking on those uh, ads or if you're not subscribing or you're not clicking like you're not contributing to the ad revenue which then helps google which then helps me as well as any other person you see out there so online advertising is definitely a new frontier in advertising it allows the smallest businesses to advertise which would have been cost prohibitive years ago it used to be you used to have that, your own advertising firm, your own advertising division. You have to hire people. With online advertising, it really has changed the face of consumer and business. Some examples, and I've already kind of talked about most of these. Some examples of online advertising, of course, include Facebook. You have Google AdWords. This is where you pay for the advertisement. So, for example, at the beginning of the school year, I'll be paying for some ads to get the word out about these videos, to get the word out about MrFordsClass.net. AdSense is where you get paid to help advertise. So if you have a blog site, if you have a website, you get paid to advertise for other companies. Again, tying to what I just said a second ago, these videos are part of Google's AdSense. I allow Google and YouTube, which same company, to put ads in front of my videos and I get some money from those ads. And again, there's nothing bad with that. That's how I'm able to pay the bills to be able to do more of these. Okay, finally, our want to know more section. If you want to know more about Bitcoin, you can go see Bitcoin directly. Of course, PayPal, definitely worth checking out. I highly recommend PayPal. Uh, they're a great service. It doesn't cost you as a consumer anything. If you just want to have a PayPal account, all the, all the money is handled on the business end of it. So, for example, if you bought a membership to my site, you don't pay additional fees for using PayPal. I pay a percentage of what the fee was. Please subscribe. You know, we talked about how ad revenue and YouTube and all this stuff. This is a documentary. It's phenomenal. It talks about the whole YouTuber world and how subscriptions 
mean ad revenue, which means money for YouTubers like me to continue to make more videos. Uh, definitely worth checking out. Please subscribe. Kind of a cool um, documentary about the YouTubers. The next one is Cafe Press. This is what we talked about earlier, consumer to consumer marketing. If you have good ideas for products and you don't want to do the whole logistics and infrastructure to develop these products, you can create stuff using Cafe Press. Another one is called Store Envy. Also another one of these consumer to consumer kind of marketplaces. A lot of cosplayers use Store Envy to sell um, prints of themselves so that they can then go on to buy more costumes and support their cosplaying ways. Okay, we have reached the end of our intro stuff. If you've been with me the entire time or if you join me partway through, thank you so much. As an educator, it really means a lot that I'm helping people out there learn. I hope you've enjoyed these videos. You can always contact me on my Facebook page. You can contact me here at my YouTube page. I want to know how these videos were for you. If you have any ideas for future videos, any suggestions, I'm always open to that. Until our next series of videos, we'll see you later. Have fun studying out there and best wishes in whichever way you're going in your academic pursuits. Goodbye for now. Bye-bye.